New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, the bro, Casanova, representing yeah, Nigeria on. in the <laughs> building. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nigeria's on. You already know. No, so look, um, you uh, your, your, your heritage, though, is... Panamanian. Panamanian. Yeah. Right? Direct. That's your mom. But you know, yeah. obviously, there's a lot of black people in Panama and mm-hmm. Africa. It's all connected, transatlantic slave born trade. African. Yeah. So your people is just always, there's a lot of African culture in your people anyway. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I'm from Flatbush, so. A lot like, of African. That's the motherland of uh, yeah. uh, 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 Africans in Brooklyn. So what made you go back to Nigeria? What was, what, how, how did it happen? Um, um, with the record. I put Tory on it. I was like, you know, he 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 would sound good for this record. And then uh, I went to the studio, and they was like, yo, this is an Afro beat. You got you you can't like just come out without putting somebody from Africa on it. I'm like, man, I don't know nobody from Africa. Like, yeah, how yeah, I'm gonna yeah. pull this off? Then I'm like, oh, I just went to Devito's show two months ago, and he said, let's get in the studio. I ain't had nothing for him then. Let me see. If he'll jump on this, I FaceTime him while the song was playing. He said, send it to me right now. You know, the game. I'm like, he ain't going to get on it. Two days later, I'm on a plane. It just come through. I listen to it. I'm like, hold on. He violated this. Like, yeah. like I was so shocked. I ain't even tell a label for like a week. I came in there real cocky. Yo, listen, this is what's going on right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is what I want to go with. And I had two verses on it, and I took it off. I'm like, I don't even care. You know, some people are stingy. You be like, no, I'll just my record. I want, I want to go in on it. I'm like, nah, I'm in and out like a stick up. I listened to um, Unforgettable, and I saw a French did French. It went in and out. I said, well, I'm gonna follow your lead, brother. Yeah. And that's what I did. So whose that's idea dumb. was it to shoot the video in Nigeria? All right, the video was like, yo, you should come to Africa. I said, you ain't telling me nothing. <laughs> I jumped on a flight like two weeks later, and then we just made it work. I, I just got my passport, so I was just happy. And I, so this is the first uh, overseas first trip real, that you're taking? First real overseas. Yeah, I went to DR like two weeks before that. Okay. But uh, my first real overseas trip, so that was dope. And how was it? I mean, I, I saw you was you went to and made sure you saw the people. You went to yeah. Everywhere the I go, I go. To, I go to the projects. My yeah. my girl say like this ain't no vacation. I hate going with you because you always go to the project. I just be wanting to feel the hood, the real people. Like in DR, I went to the projects. Uh, the Bahamas, I went to the projects. Africa, I went to the projects. I just be wanting to see what's going on. But Africa touched me more than anything. How come? Like, like it was real. It was just like. Different. It's the stuff you see on TV. It can't. It can't compare. Like, I went to the project. They didn't even have no light switch. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But they was happy, so I was confused. Like, how could you be so happy, and you have nothing? Right. So it made me kind of like look at myself. I'm complaining. I just came home from doing all this time. I'm rapping. I'm getting legal money, and I'll be complaining. I'll be mad some days, and I'm About like nothing. Nothing. And I'm, I'm able to pay my bills. I'm able to take care of my kids. And I'm just like, maybe maybe I need to stop complaining. Maybe I just need to work harder. Because you look at it, they kids. It's like four years old, wanting yeah. to clean your shoe, wanting to clean your tie on a car, stopping, like, selling you stuff. And I'm looking like four years old, like, literally. I'm like, damn, they hustle is immaculate. And I just, like... I felt blessed just to be around it, just to mm-hmm. witness it. And I just went in the trenches and just was like observing. And it was just something out of this world. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's no fear in their eyes. You know, some people just like, like scared to go. I went up with all my jewelry on and everything. Some people like, don't do it. But I didn't see no, no negative energy. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, we we from New York. We we kind of see. If something ain't mm-hmm. right, no body language, no none of that. And um, I think a lot of people are confused. Like, it's really just love. They really just treat you good. They treat you like a king. And they treat the woman like queens. Like, I had to tell 
Like some of the dudes, like, hey, hey, nah, I, I lift my girl up. What are you doing? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> nah, you know, trying to be too helpful. <laughs> too helpful, you know what I'm saying? Is she okay? Is she all right? Yeah, is she all right? You know what I'm saying? But I had fun. I went to the beach. I went to the club. I turned up every night. I went out with DeVito every night. Yeah, and it, a lot of people don't, we don't see that side, right? Yeah. Like, we're not marketed that. I, you mm-hmm. know, I, I believe because they don't want... They don't want black people to reconnect with Africa like that. Because mm-hmm. black people, if Africa gets respect, then black people get respect. And if black people start getting respected on earth, then it changes the dynamic of everything that we're accustomed to. Right? So it changes everything. If you right? see the image of Africa as actually this awesome place that people would be desiring to go to, then yeah, then people, it, it could change, for a racist, it, it, cha- it mess up their head. Changes everything. It changes mm-hmm. tourism. It changes what they're able to get away with, with abusing those nations with mm-hmm. gold and diamonds and chocolate and rubber and everything that comes from those nations that they don't get to benefit from. It gives mm-hmm. them a certain power structure. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't want that to happen. Definitely. How does it feel to have a... Uh, I mean, you've had records before that, like, you know... you know, flex, Punch you in your face. Flex, <laughs> flex, <laughs> play, flex play it at night. Case slay yeah. play it at night. You know, yeah. they may move around. Knock even your teeth out. Even mm-hmm. more than... But this is different. How does it feel to have a record you can hear at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Dope, dope. Um, I think my whole project is gonna be like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just ready. I'm just ready to transform. I think I don't want to be put in that box, in that gangster box. I, it's not cool. You know what I'm saying? And I've been saying it for a long time, but you know, sometimes you need to go through things. Like I feel like I, I've been dodging a lot of bullets. You know, figuratively what I'm and literally. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've been dodging a lot of bullets, and like again, I'm blessed. So um, and you're in a spot right now where if you continue the path that you're on mm-hmm. within maybe already but certainly within a year you could be fully removed from that. Like you mm-hmm. could just be a mainstream, you could just be an artist. Like mm-hmm. there's no association. You cleaned up the whole thing with Takashi mm-hmm. which could have went left, it didn't. Mm-hmm. Now you got this mainstream re- like you have a real opportunity to just be whatever artist you want Casanova to be. And that, that's that's what I like about me right now. <laughs> that's what I like because Good. even like you said with, with with boy I felt like the whole industry turned on me <laughs> with that situation and that was like an eye opener for me cause I'm like dang the DJs wasn't playing my song you know what I'm saying I wasn't getting invited out I wasn't getting booked nowhere it was like I was like the black sheep and it was crazy because New York, I used to feel like I, I, I had New York on my back so much until he came around and everybody switched on me. I'm talking about artists, everybody, like, for like five months, six months, it was just like me thinking, do I still want to rap? You know what I'm saying? Like, because especially when you're when you, when you trying to explain to somebody, like, what? Like, you really think this dude is messing with me? You know what I'm saying? And it, you kind of like got to trick yourself to be like, nah, I'm not bugging. And but you took the high road, though. That's, yeah, that's I what, definitely did. The moral did. of the story is so interesting. It mm. all turned when you decided to just say no. Yeah. Yeah, it could have went left. But, you know, I thought of a bigger picture. And I always said it when Evo used to talk to me. I said, I've been there before. Yeah. I've been indicted, gang indictments, all my friends locked up. We all in the same jail. You know what I'm saying? So... I'm just happy that I'm just outgrowing the the sucker shit. You know That's do, it, do you feel that after we watched this whole thing play out, I took your advice. Mm-hmm. You came up, I think the last time you was like, look, you need to talk to him. Mm-hmm. And I worked on that, mm-hmm. right, um, behind the scenes. And we was the, the day before they took him in. He was coming up here. I was going to have him up here. And mm-hmm. we were going to have a sit down. And literally, he texted me the night before. We were setting it up, boom. And, um... I'm not sure I would have got through to him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But um, do you feel like we're sitting at a time where people see how all of this, the whole story played out? You know what I mean? For not only Takashi, but for somebody like yourself that decided, yo, I know I come from a certain place, but I'm going to take the high road. I'm going to do things different. Yeah. Do you think I that ca- people get it? I think, again, I didn't, I was stuck. Like, I, I felt like I was stuck, like, shoot this nigga, let this nigga live, like, risk it all just to prove my point, just to show people that he not about that life or whatever the case may be. And I caught myself. But to go where you going, 
I just went and spoke in City Hall about the juvenile uh, criminal system. And I don't think I would have never did that and let, if I didn't meet Takashi. Because after that, I used to talk to him on the phone. And he used to be like, like, say stuff like, man, I ain't stupid. They're not getting me, man. I ain't going there. I'm, I'm not doing this. And I'd be like, yo, but you just was on the gram saying, talking crazy. I'm right, like, what's up right. with you, man? He like, man, that's how I got to get my money. I got a troll. What you talking about? But I ain't stupid. I ain't going in there. I might say I'm going in there, but I'm not. So it just, it just made me laugh to myself. It made me happy. Like, everybody thought some, like, the tough guys, like, oh, you should have just did what you did. And I'm like, man, I've been in jail all my life, man. Do what I do, what, to go back to jail for oh, y'all to leave me again? Because mm -hmm. when you in jail, everybody going to leave you. And I'm a, I'm a predicate. <laughs> I go to jail. They ain't, they, it's double digits. It's football numbers. So I just, I just wanted to speak to the kids, and I feel like that's my thing. I don't want to speak to no adults or nothing, but I'm gonna try to start doing stuff for the kids and and and, and letting them know it, they ain't got a front. You know what I'm saying? They ain't gotta be accepted. They could be respected. Did you get the impression that before he went in from talking to him that Takashi was trapped, that he was in a situation that he couldn't get out of? I don't, I don't think he was trapped. I think. Again, that's how he made his money. You know what I'm saying? Once once, once he saw that he could do this and make money, because be serious, the internet is born without him. You that's know what I'm saying? A lot of people saying that. The internet is not even the same without him. Every day, whether I was beefing with him or not, <laughs> I snuck on his page. You know what I'm saying? See what he was doing, who he was violating. He was entertaining. What does that say about us, though? That's terrible, though, because I would look at it. Look, yeah, everyone Everybody, was saying it's every boring. Day when whatever. did this. Takashi did but that. But we would see his story. Like I looked at it like this. This is not going to end well. Mm -hmm. He is going to end up in jail. And some of the trolling for likes went so far to where he was incriminating himself to the point where you look at him like this is stupid. This like is going to end trolled. He, he could have trolled and not been incriminating himself. He could have did that and not definitely, but he didn't have no help. Everybody around him was lost. But I think that's what he means by Yeah, that's trap. what I meant by the trap part. Yeah. Did he end up in a situation where the people around him were such that he had... But I, b believe it or not, he was a genius, man. That little kid, I'm talking about, I talked to him like three times a week. He'll call me for no reason. Be like, yo, Cass, what's going on? Yo, man, uh, this, that. And I'd just be sitting back, not even believing I'm on the phone with this guy. And just like, yo, this little kid is smart. And he'll actually do what he just told me on the phone and it, it, it like be successful. And I'm just like, dang, how did he, he pull that off? He wasn't dumb. He knew he was using them. That's what he told me. He knew he was using them. Like, I know they're going to try to do this. I don't care. I'm prepared. He knew, but he got caught slipping in his crib. You know what I'm saying? But he knew he was smart to me. But I just, I just knew it was gonna go like that. And he's still a little kid. He's still whatever. I hope he not telling. But it looked like whatever the case may be. But more power to you, man. Like I'm just happy I dodged the bullet. I'm making good music. Yeah. And um, Bleak is super excited about yeah, your album. Yeah, yeah. He's super excited. How 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 involved is Bleak in the creative process and Rock Nation? Um, Bleak Bleak just let me do what I, I do. You know what I'm saying? Um. I'm grateful to have Bleak because, you know, I was warehouse music. Then he was like, yo, Cash, I ain't going to lie. I can't keep up with you, man. Every, you over here. You doing videos over here. My bad. I'm concentrating on this, on this. Go ahead and go just with the rock, man. I, I, I'll look after you if you need some help, but just go ahead. And I'm like, yo, wow, what's going on? He's like, listen, you need more help than me. Yeah. And then we was in the hallway, and we just laughing. But he's super excited. He... He listened to it. He he gave me pointers on it. You know what I'm saying? That's big, bro. So how uh, other th other than this uh, this record mm. and this collaboration on it, what what's on the album that you could tell um, us about? Uh, what's on the EP is just it's just fun music. I think it's just like a taste of what's going on. I already got my album done. You know what I'm saying? I just I just saved all the pain for my album, but. Uh, this right here, free at last, is just like I'm enjoying myself. I was in so Atlanta. there's two different projects. Yeah. So free at last is the EP, which comes out in two days. And this 15. is just 
Vibes. It vibes. Just vibes. And you're saying free at last, meaning your spirit, your mind, your, yes, your whole, yes. the, everything I'm about happy. you. I'm happy. I'm off parole. I'm free. Like you said, my mind, I don't feel no baggage. I don't got no baggage on me. I just, I ain't beefing with nobody. I ain't walking around here with no guns. I don't want to be gangster. I'm just free. I'm That's in my beautiful. own space. He's at the Rock Nation brunch. I'm at the brunch. Every year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Doing it, doing it. Got me out of there. You know what I'm saying? I'm just enjoying myself, man. When you're in like places like that, does it ever surprise you, like the people that you admire from afar who come up to you and be like, oh, Kaz, I like your music? Always. Or... Always. I'll I be in La La Land. That's why I be so happy. You know, they be like, how oh, this big 200 and... 10 pound dude just dancing. I'm happy. Leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? I'm blessed. I, I swear to God. I'm like, I, every time I go to the brunch or something and I don't see the people that say they lit, I'll be like, I'm lit. I'm here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's a blessing just to be around the, these people, man. I was just at Puff Daddy house the other day and I'm on him like a shark. I'm like this. I'm just watching him talk. Big, crazy house. His house is crazy. I'm looking like, I want it. I'm coming for it. All I got to do is pay attention. You know what I'm saying? Wait my turn. Puffy said, it's a, it's, a, it's a house down the block with your name on it. I said, you ain't got to tell me twice. And I'm just I'm just observing. I think you just, in this game, you just got to pay attention to what's really going on and stay away from the suckers. Have you learned anything about patience and timing? Because it has, you know, since you you know, since you this, what, you put out the... The last tape, how long ago? A year ago? Now? Yeah, probably like uh, six, seven months ago. That's, okay, six, yeah. seven months. But it took you some time to get there. You put that project out. Mm -hmm. Now you've just been patient about this process. What has mm -hmm. that taught you? Because some people just rush and put stuff out. It feels like you taking your time. I was kind of, before I was kind of unorganized, I guess. You know, I ain't had no guidance. And I was just putting stuff out. Because, you know, the people was like, oh, where's some more music? Like, we like you, but where's your music? So I was kind of rushing, just throwing stuff out and kind of getting um, distracted because everybody was like, yo, your music is good. It was too gangster, though. Like, mm. it's too... I'm like, dang, how you want me? I said punch you in your face, knock your teeth out. I ain't say shoot you in your face. That's true. But they like, it's too, like, <laughs> aggressive. Too aggressive for what? <laughs> I don't know. They were just like, like, it was scaring people. Nah, I, man. I think I was scaring people. I use as jump far music. As... I use jump music to talk shit about people that you know what I'm saying. I couldn't <laughs> talk about. Like if I was having a bad day, I would just throw your shit on. Uh, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> right, that's, that's a lot, though. I mean, nah, you know, like, you and I grew up on MOP, you see? and it's still a lot. <laughs> but now this day and age I mean, is listen. bad because I think it's like punching your face. Don't run. Everybody getting shot. He's two twenty. Black. Felon, scary. Yeah. Nah, we not booking them. We don't even oh, want that crowd. For the Plus bookings. the history. Yeah. You said Yeah, felon. but now, yeah. okay, but you say that, all right, and you was just at a show the other day, and I loved it. Mm -hmm. Somebody threw a bottle <laughs> while he's on stage. And what happened? He gets off the stage, <laughs> walks up to the dude in his face, and some little nerd, <laughs> dude's shook now, because, you know, he ain't never been, he probably been out his, <laughs> off his, you know, little suburban neighborhood before, and he thought shit was sweet. Cast in his face, looks at him and goes, and the beat drops, punch you in the face. <laughs> I knock your teeth out. And the whole crowd starts screaming at him. He gets back on the stage. This shit was dope. You should run that same skin at every show. <laughs> Pay somebody to throw a bottle. You get up in the crowd, get in their face, and turn up. It's a great good, yeah. That skit. kid probably peed on himself. No, nah, you know what's so it's a crazy? Great skit, man. Again, I learned, I learned life. So a lot of people talk. You know, this is the internet. People probably talk about you, you, like, probably. whatever. But when you see these people... Nah, they don't want it. They don't have that same energy. And instead of me proving to you that you're not about that life by putting paws on you or risking my career, I'm just going to pull up on you and see if you're really going to do what you say you're going to do. So I saw the bottle get thrown or whatever it was. I saw it because, like, I looked. I'm like, hold on, hold on. Stop the music. He like, nah, you threw the bottle, man. Don't, don't drop that music. And you know what I'm saying? And just to show you, like, he ain't really mean that. Sometimes they don't really mean that. You gotta, you gotta ask them sometimes face to face. Yeah. Like, do, do you mean that? 
Are you sure? You're having a moment. <laughs> you, slip, 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 slip. you had a moment. I'm going to yeah. let you have a pass. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, you made I'm a mistake, right? I'm just telling you, it's a great skit. Thank yeah. you. When you get your Grammy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> have them do it on stage. That's have somebody <laughs> throw a bottle. You go on Viral. The- <laughs> <laughs> That's viral. The Grammys? What? It's lit. The Grammys don't play. I saw they cut Drake off. They ain't Yo, playing. They did Drake dirty up They ain't there. playing. Drake? It they begged Drake off. to come, and then he's in the middle of telling everybody that they don't need a Grammy, oh, and they cut I, him off. I was going to say, <laughs> oh, I felt that's bad, wow. I that's felt bad fact. for Drake, but at the same time, they've wanted him to come for years. He finally shows up and then says, you don't need this. And he paused. They were like, all right, commercial. Oh, that's They did him right, dirty, man. but I also kind of understood why then. No, I get what they did, but don't ask him to come then. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If you're not going to give him time to say what he wants to say, that's the biggest problem with the Grammys that they yes. have with a lot of artists, yeah. is that they you know, um, are asking people to participate. And then when the people say, this is how I'd like to participate. They don't want it. They don't want it. So people are like, well, they barely want to air the rap categories. Yeah. At least this year we got best rap song, best rap album, at least. Yeah, they've been doing, they air a couple, but rap's the biggest genre in the world. So of course they're going to air a couple. Mm -hmm. Look, man, I'm proud of you. Keep going. Um, Is there a tour? Is there a plan? Like, what's happening? I'm setting up some stuff. It's a lot of stuff in the making. I'm ready to go on the road, too. Definitely. Are you proud of New York right now, looking around? Yeah, Cardi B just won a Grammy. A Boogie's album is top of the chart every week. New York is like. looking like like something something spectacular right now, definitely. Amazing. Happy Y'all give it up. You, man. Keep Thank it up. Casanova, Nigeria's own, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> in the building. Run that tour. Tory Lanez, David O right now. <laughs> <laughs>